Hello YouTube, hopefully you can see something of what I'm doing here. Uh, I have here a Ford Focus uh, 2013 with a OEM head unit and we are going to install a Audison AP 5.9 bit in here installing with it uh, its own CD and I'm going to show you how to do it. So first of all uh, we put everything on and then I uh, put the software on my computer. Uh, hopefully you can see here. It is completely everything is uh, uh, like, like in default and it plays some music, uh, actually uh, some uh, noise uh, at the moment, but everything is in plain default. So first of all, what we do, uh, we put this Audison CD inside. It is Audison Prima Setup CD 1.0. We put it inside here. Uh, with the newest model comes a newer CD, but this is OK CD. And then we go here, device, uh, settings configuration wizard. It started to play some sign sweep already there, but this silences, uh, silences it out. Then we go to start, uh, we select front rear aux uh, from the uh, input channels, then we need to put everything uh, controls set to zero. Now in this OEM head unit, I'm not, actually don't know how to use it, but let's go into menu, uh, menu, uh, then audio setting, uh, sound probably, treble is at zero, then go to middle, zero, bass, zero, fader, balance, everything is at zero. Then back to CD and sign sweep. Now we need to raise the volume uh, to the maximum undistorted. Now this has a volume of 30 maximum. I'm gonna lower it down about uh, to 25 so the, it is high but not the not the maximum and in here we need to uh, play the CD uh, uh, track one then we set go now it's gonna uh, listen to the sound that comes out from the OEM head unit now with this it will, it will calculate uh, how high the um, volume is how high the voltage is coming inside the amplifier and then is uh, uh, checking the sine sweep from 20 to 20,000 hertz that it is undistorted from the whole way uh, from the down 20 hertz up to 20,000 hertz. This is quite fast process as you can see it's already already soon done. Uh, with this uh, we can see that if we have enough uh, enough volume at our OEM head unit for the amplifier to get as good as possible signal. Now it's ready. It shows here that the channels 1, 2 and 3, 4 are okay. Uh, if it is uh, black, it does not get any signal. If it is red, it is distorted. So we have enough volume here at the front and now we can go into next. Now, first of all, uh, next, click and then it says to play track number 2. Uh, then we go here, and it is probably this button. Uh, track number two, pink noise. And then we go to here and press go. Now it will listen uh, the sound that is coming from the head unit. Uh, it is pink noise, so this uh, random noise between 20 to 20,000 hertz. And the uh, amplifier knows what kind of single uh, it is. It wants to hear. Uh, it knows how the signal is in uh, the CD. And now it listens uh, what kind of equalizations or what kind of uh, distortions or anything that the OEM head unit does. Uh, because the cables are long and sometimes you even need to run this with the uh, car on so it can detect the uh, distortions and these little noises that's, that comes when the car is on. Uh, you sh uh, normally you don't need to do that. Oh, where you are? There you are. And normally you don't need to do that. But now uh, it listens it and it de-equalizes it. Uh, de-equalizing means that it has a, a kind of map of uh, the pink noise it needs to hear, but if it differs some way, some way of another from the signal, it will uh, amplify or de-amplify the signal in these, these tiny spots uh, where 
the OEM head unit makes some alteration to the signal. Now with this we can actually see here that the OEM head unit uh, starts to cut from 100 Hertz down and it has very uh, uh, low peak here at around 250 Hertz. This is a range where uh, normally people speak like from 100 uh, maybe 2 to 300 up to 1 kilohertz. So this is audible um, like like songs that are coming. Uh, it checks every channel equal, uh, and makes a map of this kind of uh, behavior of the OEM head unit and adds a uh, equalization uh, that is um, uh, in other phase than this. So the output signal that is going into amplifier uh, inside the amplifier will be completely flat and with that flat amplification we can get much better sound. Uh, with this if we just uh, use these crossovers here and play the uh, um, time alignments and these we will have a slight drop of a around 6 dBs or even more um, uh, it's around well around 10 dB or something like that in in the 250 Hertz range and up in here we have slight uh, variations but this is very high dip and as you can see the back channels are also uh, a little bit better uh, but they it, it has a very uh, high uh, slope here and the lower ones are here at the minus like 2 to 3 dBs and everything else is like uh, up to 6 dBs. So uh, it will equalize every channel and take uh, stuff from every channel to get a as flat as possible signal to the amplifi uh, amplifi amplifier to amplificate. Uh, so we will be waiting here a little while and then we'll be setting time alignments and these. Actually, this kind of behavior with de-equalizing, I think it is patented only for Audison devices. So Audison Prima series has this Audison bit, bit 10, Audison uh, bit 1, Audison bit 1 HD, Audison bit 1 D, and the new bit Nov, Audison bit Nov. Every of these amplifiers and also a Hertz, I think it was H8 uh, amplifier uh, DSP has the same kind of de-equalization. Now let's just wait a little bit and then we continue. Okay, now when we have everything set here and done, uh, we can actually see here every channel if you want to see how the uh, every channel has been. Uh, how how the whoa the subwoofer channel has a really really deep drop here in uh, like in 400 hertz or something like that. Uh, but a center channel, it checks every channel it gets in. Uh, so it has very uh, high variations of every channel. Now, if you take only from, let's, let's say, front left and front right, uh, the back channels of rear left and rear right, right will be different. Uh, so with this device, you can actually check every channel individually and set every channel the equalizations correctly. Now, when everything is okay, we can go back in here and lower the volume down to zero and then go back in here, go next and next and now we will be selecting what kind of speakers this car has. Now I know that the front end here has a uh, two-way cross, uh, two-way speakers uh, from Audison. Audison, I think it was uh, two ohm series. So we need highs like in from Twitter and mids uh, and we can check here that it is only one channel coming to the left and right. And then we have uh, OEM back speakers with a mid uh, and a tweeters. And then we have a uh, subwoofer out here. Uh, oh, sorry about that. Like so. Now uh, we don't have actually subwoofer here, but I will be setting it correctly also in here because uh, if you want to put add put a additional one subwoofer in in here, you just connect it into the speaker output, and you don't need to to make these uh, settings anymore. So with this, we have one, two, three, four channels and a fifth channel for the subwoofer. We go next and select here that is one is front left, uh, two, three, four, and subwoofer. Now uh, uh, these are set with the uh, wirings back in the amplifier, but we know we always put the uh, first one into uh, front left, uh, right, right front, and then the back speakers. Now we go next here, 
it should be now uh, device configuration completed we go finish it writes the settings into the uh, uh, amplifier and, and we can this actually changes very soon uh, to match our speaker settings in our car uh, like so uh, it's con it's uh, all uh, ready here but we want to add additional things we go up in here, uh, take settings, working mode to expert, so we can check the um, filters correctly. Uh, front left filter, we want it to have a high pass with a down to 40 Hz, so we don't want to play the sub uh, frequencies at the front. Also at the rear, we go here and high pass from the 40 Hz up. And then check the subwoofer with a low pass of 80 Hz, 12 dB. It is okay. Uh, when we have 12 dB here in the subwoofer section, we need to add a 12 dB at the front with a uh, inverted... F uh, no, actually, we don't check the inverted phase on the speakers, but we set the inverted phase on the subwoofer. When you have 12 dB per octave slope, it will... Uh, slow down the signal uh, it will actually make a 180 degrees turn in the signal phase so we need to invert the subwoofer to uh, match the subwoofer to the front end correctly and uh, now uh, we have a subwoofer that affects the mid-range that the low end of the front and back speakers so we need to check that the front has also 12 dp uh, uh, 12 dp on the front and rear has also 12 dp if we set this higher like in 24 dp we need to set subwoofer to 24 dp and take the invert phase out because 12 dp is 180 degrees and 24 dp is full 360 degrees Degrees. Now everything is set here. All we have left is to uh, make the time alignments. Now I have a measurement tape here. Uh, some of the DSPs has this very genius way to set DSPs. It is really, really easy. We take a measurement tape and we check uh, if we have two-way uh, front end uh, with a passive crossover. We probably need to uh, take the position of the center of the both speakers. Now we have tweeter up in here and mid-range up in here. The, normally the stereo image will be around this section or a little bit higher. So we will be measuring from here into my left ear. And on the right side we will be measuring around here into my right ear. And the uh, amount of uh, centimeters from there will be the time alignment. I will be putting you uh, down there so I can make the measurements because I need both hands here. Okay, just wait a second there and I will be making this. So from there into my ear when I'm driving, I have hands here and I'm driving like so. We have around 93 centimeters and then we are putting it here into set distance section. Um, let's get you down here. In the set distance section, uh, we will be adding the 93 centimeters. And then same to the right side. Now with these uh, settings, it will automatically uh, adjust the time alignments correctly. Normally, we take the longest way to the speaker and then minus the shortest one and set that uh, value to the uh, time alignment, but this device calculates it itself correctly, so we only need to tell it how far are the speakers. 134 centimeters for the front right one. Now with the back speakers it is quite difficult because the back speakers will uh, affect on the front end stereo image very greatly, so probably we need to lower them a little bit down uh, from a here, a channel 4 and channel 3 are the back speakers. We will be lowering them down to 6 dBs. So they will affect a little, little bit to the front end. And the, then we will put the same uh, distances from the speakers uh, to the front. Now I have made these many many times, like 20 to 30 times, and I know that the stereo image is around up here, because the tweeter is normally up in here, or the mid-range will climb up the door and set 
set the uh, and sound like it's up in here in the door so I will be setting only 37 centimeters to rear left 37 centimeters or oh, 39 37 and then the right hand side will be actually sounding that is coming from the back seat so I will be setting the time alignment around here I will be driving like so it will be 114 centimeters with these backside time alignments you actually need to listen to it really closely to get it correctly the best way is to completely shut down the back speakers to get the stereo image correctly uh, that's there we got everything now set we can actually take the CD out CD out and take customer CD uh, you, you probably I I, su I suggest that you use a customer CD now this has a scooter 25 years of water we get very good CD we put this CD in here and then we will be listening about the stereo image and the sound if we need to alter it in any way but uh, this music is a, a copyrighted so I will be not playing it for you now sometimes when you ha don't have a very good CD here, try listening to radio. The radio usually has a very nice stereo image, at least good enough to set it correctly. Now with these settings I heard that the stereo image is a little bit to the left and on the some of the uh, songs that from the scooter has it is actually st mono stereo that is coming uh, mono from the both channels so it does not have very good stereo image. It is good for electronic music but it's not good for sound quality wise. Now with this uh, set I heard that it will be, uh, it is around 30 centimeters to the left, that is not correct. So I will be erasing, uh, no lowering the distance from the front left speaker a little bit and check it out. Nuori tyyppi ei edes tiedä, että tänään on kansallinen veteraanipäivä, sen takia, että tätä veteraanipäivää ei ole juhlittu mitenkään sille ehkä kauhean nuoria vetoavalla tavalla. Se on tähän asti ehkä ollut ihan ok, koska on ehkä ajateltu enemmän niin, että... Now with this small listening I lowered it down to 85 centimeters. I think it was around 93 centimeters from here left. A little bit adjusting and try to find out the center of the uh, stereo image. Uh, using a good Spotify songs like I have Tonnin Sorsa. Uh, you can find it from um, Spotify. Check it out. It has very good sound quality uh, and it has a songs that have a lot of bass, a uh, small amount of bass and rock and roll songs that has a something to uh, look for uh, as a reference in the car audio systems. Now it is already completely set up. This car is ready. The stereo image is nicely at the front of the car. It's around uh, it's around this section here. It is not not very precise because we have the back speakers on. But when we lower it uh, down to 6 dBs, it will actually help the stereo image. And one more thing to show here. Usually you should a little bit uh, attenuate the front left uh, speakers like in minus 1.0 uh, dBs. I'll just a little bit because it's closer, silence it just a little bit. And now everything is set up. Now we just click here a device, synchronize device, write to device. So we write these settings now into the device and then we will finalize it and then it's okay. Then it's over. This is This setup is now done. Finalize the device yes and we will be waiting a little bit then we can actually check put some music on take the usb out it will go silent usually <laughs> demo effect it now works uh, we can now close the radio wait for a little bit to the amplifier to go down and then put it back on and we have a nice theory image here and everything is saved on the preset number one. Now with these Prima amplifiers you can get a uh, additional DRC, a direct remote controller in here where you can set the pre uh, presets. Like set the preset that the person next to you has the best stereo image to play to show how good the sound, uh, sound is, is in your car. Now with this you, the driver, get the best audible uh, 
audible experience inside your car, but the one who is passenger side only hears mostly of the right speaker. It is sound quality wise good, but the stereo image is not there. You can set the preset to the right side also. Just check the time alignment from the speakers and listen it a little bit to yourself that the stereo image is at the center of the car. Hopefully this helps you how to install Audition Prima and this was a 2013 Ford Focus with the OEM head unit and Audition Prima AP 5.9. Uh, my name was Villa Santico and we see you on the next video. Bye bye!